kid. Seriously. <laughs> Welcome everyone to Star Wars in Review. It's the show that will throw six touchdown passes for the Vikings in the Super Bowl so long as we have the video game controls nestled in our paws. Over here, don't play I'm, video games. <laughs> over here, I'm Maya Madrid, and over there is my better podcasting half. That's Luke Neitzel. Every so often he and I are gonna sit down and discuss what's happening in the Star Wars universe, answer your kid serious, serious, seriously kid questions, and review an episode from the Clone Wars series how you doing buddy not too bad not too bad it's warm here unseasonably warm and it's destroying my lawn because all the snow constantly melts and turns it into a river and then my dogs get all money and my kids get pissed off because they can't play in it but it's warm so i'll take that my car starts in the morning at least one of ours does Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> i have Never some uh, i have some good news though and i forgot to mention it before when we had talked but i really Uh-oh. wanted to bring this up the Bucks fired Jason Kidd. I was very excited about that. It makes it it makes it a lot easier to cheer for that team. Yeah, you know, it's it's weird. I like winning in basketball. I think that's a good thing. I I like it when you have big stars like the Greek freak that yes. you can build around. I don't like it when people beat their wife till they have permanent hearing loss. That I don't like. Just not, not a fan. fan. No. Yeah, I, I can't get not into it. So, good riddance, Jason Kidd. I hope you never get another job, and uh, I I hope you stay away from women for forever, and anyone else that you would want to hit. Uh, let's move on to Star Wars stuff, though, because that's what people actually will tune in to listen to. Allegedly. Allegedly. I like Joseph Gordon-Levitt. You like Joseph Gordon-Levitt, I believe. Yeah. Uh, pretty much everyone that I've ever talked well, to. He's a he's a star of Brick. Well, we're going to talk about that. Everyone I've ever talked to has at least a favorable impression of the highly skilled actor. The weight of playing kind of Robin in The Dark Knight Rises is easily overwhelmed by his performances in 500 Days of Summer, Inception, Looper, Lincoln, Sin City, Snowden, and your favorite movie, or Brick. Some have a soft spot in their hearts for him because he was in Third Rock from the Sun. But for me, it was his stint on that 70s show that made me love the guy. JGL has heard the Star Wars fans and some of their bashing on his friend and employer, Ryan Johnson. And like Samuel L., he has begged the chance to retort. In a long-form essay written after watching the movie, the actor rushed to defend the movie, especially in regards to Luke Skywalker. Here's his quote from Medium.com. That a big Hollywood studio would take such risks on such a big property again to present their central hero in a drastically different light than ever before, to unflinchingly deliver the ominous message that even the most pure-hearted idealists can struggle through darkness and doubt. These are not the kinds of decisions that get made when short-term profitability is prioritized above all else. These are risks taken in the interest of building a world that is not only good for selling popcorn and action figures this year, but that thrives in the long run on a bed of literary substance and artistic dignity. As a fan, I take it as a sign of respect that the movie was not only a good time, but a provocative challenge. A lot of studios and filmmakers don't think so highly of their audiences. In the end, to me, The Last Jedi demonstrates not only that we can still have faith in Star Wars, but that Star Wars still has faith in us. Luke, what's your reaction to JGL's comments regarding the character of Luke Skywalker and his friend and mine and yours, Ryan Johnson? What are your thoughts? Well, you're not kidding. It's his friend. And the two of them together really made a career together. You could, you could argue that both of them propped each other up to get to where they are now. Because he wasn't... He was on Third Rock from the Sun, but nobody was going to go see a movie just because the kid from Third Rock from the Sun is in a movie. So it's his friend, he's going to protect him. And that's fine. I have no problems with the characterization of Luke. I think there are multiple ways to look at a movie. You can look at it as a distraction, you can look at it as entertainment, you can look at it as art. I don't want to speak for him, but I'm going to speak for him because that's what we're doing. He's looking at this through an artistic lens of this is not just about, he even says, not selling toys or whatever and popcorn. This is about making an artistic expression. And he's glad that a major studio allowed Ryan Johnson to make that artistic expression, whether he liked it or not. And he hopes that continues in big budget filmmaking. I agree with that. I like that. I liked the movie. I like that they took chances and did other things. I like Ryan Johnson. It's hard to, for me to find fault in this. I don't think it's necessary either for people to have to jump in and defend a billion dollar movie or a 
you know, a billion, what, what, $1.3 billion movie in box office? I mean, it, that, that speaks for in itself as far as selling toys and popcorn and all that. You didn't need to do this. It's not going to change anything or do anything, but you're defending your friend. I think you're right. I think this is buddies defending buddies, and I hope someday when somebody comes after me, that you come to my defense when they attack me. I'd really appreciate that. There, there's two things I have to mention as we head into this episode now that you've said that, because first off, this is episode four, The Quest for Peace. Right. Which I'm very excited about because that's the best sequel ever made. But we've been doing this now for four episodes and numerous reviews, not just from you, but from our, our great friend, the real Jed Dawson. And I haven't had one person tell me I suck on Twitter and it is breaking my heart. Like, I just want a tweet telling me to shut the fuck up and go back to doing whatever else it is I do. Hey, Luke, shut the fuck up. It's my turn. Ah, <laughs> someone tweet at us. So he uh, he takes about 2,000 words to say that he found the character getting old to be more pleasurable than what happened in the original trilogy to the character. His entire point is based on the idea that if you don't like the movie or just don't get it artistically, which I think is such a snobby way, especially when so many people have valid concerns. Like, there are a lot of people who don't have valid concerns about why they don't like The Last Jedi, but I think there are a lot of people who do. He can talk about the character development in The Last Jedi, but he completely discounts the character development of both Luke Skywalker, and he also earlier, I couldn't read you the whole thing, but sure. he also discounts the character development of Han Solo in the original, original trilogy. Both characters undergo major changes, and while he poo-poos that Han Solo's change in The Force Awakens, but doesn't understand that Ben Solo's turn to the dark side reverted Han Solo backwards and broke him as a man, but then he lauds it when it happens to Luke. What this smacks of to me is just buddies defending buddies, and it it takes it a little bit and tries to go highbrow and say, I'm smarter than you and you guys just don't get it, but it doesn't carry it all the way through to all of the characters. I guess I didn't Mentions. take that out of it, and I know we come from different areas, because again, I like the movie, and you and didn't I like, like Force Awakens, and right. you didn't, you didn't like it. And for me, I, I think you're seeing it a little too defensively. To me, I didn't take it as him saying, "You're dumb" or "You don't understand" if you don't get it. It was him saying, "I'm glad the studio let them take risks and not do the safe choices." He's not. I didn't take out of there, and maybe I'm missing some things because I didn't read it. I just the yeah. first I've heard of it is you reading it to me now. But what I took out of there is him saying, "I'm glad they're letting people not." just forcing them to make the safe choice. I didn't take out of that. He's saying you're dumb or don't understand if you don't agree. What pissed me off about what he said, and I should have included this in this for you, is he referred to the original trilogy or like hinted that the original trilogy was light, that it didn't really matter, that there was no change. I just watched A New Hope. I've watched Empire Strikes Back. You watch Return of the Jedi. And to think that Luke Skywalker didn't undergo a big change and to, 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 to use The Last Jedi to look down his nose at the original trilogy, come on, man. Come on, man. Why are you even in these movies? Well, I, I think they're different journeys, and I think you could you could say one journey is probably a bigger and more profound journey because the journey of Luke Skywalker at the beginning is really about becoming a man. In The Force Awakens, it's kind of overcoming despair and failure, and which to me is more impactful. They're obviously both important journeys that people have to go through. So to say you prefer one over the other doesn't necessarily mean the other is bad, and I don't know his exact wording. Maybe he said the other one is bad. He said it was light. He said it was light? I don't think at the end of Return of the Jedi, when you're standing in front of a funeral pyre with your father burning in front of you and the look on Luke Skywalker's face, I don't think it's light. I'm going to respectfully disagree with Joseph gordon Love, but I still love you for that 70s show. That was <laughs> awesome. You were amazing in it. I'm really, really sorry, but I respectfully disagree with you here. Let's move on. Let's talk about The Last Jedi again. It seems like a Last Jedi show, so let's keep going with it. It's Oscar time, buddy. And it's Luke Neitzel's second favorite time of the year, aside from Halloween. Ryan Johnson's The Last Jedi has been nominated for four Academy Awards, including Best Original Score, Best Sound Editing, Best Sound Mixing, and Best Visual Effects. Its predecessor, The Force Awakens, was nominated for fives, each of the categories from this year with the addition of film editing, but it won none of them. As our resident Oscar expert, do you put The Last Jedi as the favorite in any of these categories, should it win, and do you feel as though it should have been nominated for more? I'm okay with what it got nominated for. I don't know if it's... I, I would probably say it doesn't win much. I think visual effects will probably go to Blade Runner because what they've done is a little bit more innovative. Even if it's not as hard, it's something different. I think a lot of the stuff they did in The Force Awakens is stuff we've seen in other Star Wars movies as far as... You mean as, The Last Jedi? Or, excuse me, yeah, and The Last Jedi is the same as what we've we've seen as far as creating CGI ships. And I wouldn't have minded a cinematography nod because I think they do some really cool things in there, but there are some really good good movies out there right now that have great cinematography, so I'm not completely shocked by it. 
I would be kind of happy for it if it got score because, you know, who can't be happy for John Williams winning right. another Oscar? I think it's his 51st nomination, which is awesome. But if you've ever seen Dunkirk, the score in that movie is basically a, a character in and of itself. Um, so I would be disappointed if, if it lost to Star Wars in those categories. So I'm I'm not expecting it to win everything, but I think it's fitting that they got nominations in the ones that they did. All right, I have no idea anything <laughs> about the Oscars, so we're going to go ahead and rely sound, on Luke Neitzel for this. Sound editing is generally going to go to a war film. Makes sense, I guess. Let's move on to serious questions for Kids Seriously. Now, by the way, uh, they don't have to be serious questions. It's just we're just going with that particular name. But the way that you reach us is at kidseriouslyradio at gmail.com. Go ahead and write us your question. I guarantee every question that we have gotten has gotten put on the air and yours will too. Now, Jimmy in St. Louis writes again. <laughs> he's a friend of the program. I think by this time he's, we can call him friend of the program. He asks, what has been your least favorite Star Wars movie-going experience? Well, first off, I think everyone that's written an email is literally a friend of ours. That's right. So, <laughs> they truly right. are friends, friends of the pod. That's right. So, the, the actual movie-going experience. So, being at the movie. I'm going to say it's going to be one of the times I saw Revenge of the Sith. And this is a weird scenario. At the time it came out, it I, I saw it twice before it opened. They announced the movie was coming out, and I don't know, three months before it was coming out, you could buy tickets for the midnight showing because this was before Thursday preview. So I bought tickets with two of my buddies to go to the midnight showing so I could see it first. Well, I worked at a radio station at the time, and one of the people there knew I liked Star Wars and all that, and they signed me up as a critic to go be the radio station's critic now they didn't have me actually do anything they're like we just want to get you a ticket so i got to go like a month before it came out or three weeks or something and see it in the theater which was awesome and i love to hold that above everyone's heads at the time and then we hosted a invite only screening the night before so that thursday night at like eight o'clock so i got to go to it then and if I had known I would have gone to these two showings, I wouldn't have bought the midnight ones because I literally got out of the 8 o'clock showing and then just drove to another theater with my friends and went to a midnight showing. And I was tired and I'd just seen it. And I like movies, but I don't need to watch the same movie twice back to back. So that that was hard. I fell asleep through the middle of it and then woke back up, but that's probably good because I probably skipped a lot that's not that fun. But that was the worst for me was just having to do it back to back. Right on. Can I have a tie? Yeah. All right. I just want to. I just want to say it's probably the second. The second was the Return of the Jedi in the special edition when it came out in theaters uh, when they re-released it. And the reason why is the girl that I was with fell asleep in the movie, and I was so disgusted. I should have known right then that the relationship would never work, but it just went on and on after that. But I knew at that time. I think it's funny you say that because my first ever date was to the New Hope re-release. And the girl fell asleep as well. No, no. And I didn't notice oh. because I was too busy watching the movie. So it, it worked out just fine. My real answer is like yours. It was Revenge of the Sith. I was so angry when I watched that movie. I like it more now and I've liked it more since that moment. But at the moment, the dialogue is just so bad. I know you defend it a little bit compared to the other prequels, but... Man, even the last time I watched it, I wanted to punch myself in the face. You have to the think dialogue. it's the best of the three. The best prequels. of the three, yeah. I do. But that's like saying which pile of dog crap do you like the best? It's better in Force Awakens too. It's not. You're just no. No one agrees with you on that. That's fine. Just you literally just say that to try to piss me off. I love it. Oh. Um, <laughs> after three movies of terrible directing, I had just been sick of it. And I was just angry. I was tired of defending George Lucas as a director and as a writer. And at the end, I was just mad the entire movie. And at the end, when Vader comes out, which is supposed to be this great moment that we've been waiting for years. And the whole, like... And then he comes out and it's, like, perfect. And then he's like, hey, dude, what happened to Padme? And she's like, oh, he's dead. She's dead. I'm so sorry. And he's like, no. 
I turned, I was like, what the hell? See, get, let's get the hell out of here. You're completely wrong because that moment is the you're... perfect synopsis of the whole prequels. <laughs> you're looking at something being like, this is it. This is so badass. This is great. This is what I've been waiting for for forever. And then they fuck it up with bad dialogue and you're like, oh, I, that's, if that doesn't sum the whole thing up. Uh, that's, that's harsh, man. I mean, you're perfect. right. You are kind of right. I mean, if you look at it, it's just very meta and very Lucas-like laughing at us.